Hi guys, hope you're doing good. I'm gonna do a scenario if narcissists were upfront and truthful from the beginning on the first phone call to meet you on a first date, if they were really truthful, so. Hi, gorgeous, how are you? I'm doing good, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I'm so glad that we are speaking right now. Yes, very, I, I'm getting excited to meet you too. Um, so we're going to meet at that Mexican restaurant. That sounds, it sounds really good, right? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Like seven, seven o'clock sounds good. Sounds good. Very nice. I just want to let you know because I thought I would, you know, I saw you at the park and I gave you my phone number and I just thought that you look so sweet and innocent and such like just such a powerful strong woman and um, loving and caring and kind I just thought I would swoop in and put my talons right into your shoulders and try to swoop you up and literally destroy everything in your life and I thought you would want to be a part of that on this journey. And um, I, I, I just figured I would come in to your life and, uh, you know, probably, I don't know, get you a bunch of gifts and tell you how beautiful and wonderful you are. And once it starts soaking in to where you believe everything I say and when I go off for hours at a time you believe me and actually I'm out cheating and I'm uh, doing horrible things but you'll believe every word I say because I'll have you pretty much wrapped around my finger so then when you get sick and and you don't know where you're getting sick from it's because I'm bringing home all these different illnesses to you and then when you wonder where all the money goes it's because I'm out gambling but then I'll just tell you that I got a low paycheck and you'll believe everything I say so then I'll start taking the phones little by little from you you won't have access to the vehicle you won't be able to access too many people I'll keep you isolated and, and pretty much keep you at home all the time and I'll get you pregnant to where then you really feel dependent on me and um and pretty much try to cut out as much of your support system. I'll get your family against you too as well. I'll let them all know and think that you're crazy. I'll think that, you know, you're just having a mental breakdown and I'll get the police and courts involved to where I look like the, the great working man and you are the crazy, insane homemaker uh, that is pretty much losing their mind. So that's that's really what I, I would like to do. And then when, when you are pregnant, I'll leave you for a long time because your body, like I told you before, you know, I said if you ever had kids and stuff that, um, you know, I would have to leave you until your body came back to the, the right, how it looked before. And then, you know, I would body shame you for a while and put you down and talk about your body and then um, maybe shove you around a little bit and then come back, back and forth when uh, when other supply was not having it or found me out or busy. If they were working or out of town, especially if my other supply is out of town, I always like having a backup. So I would love it, like love it, if, uh, you know, you would join aboard this fun train, this this crazy train. And I, uh, I really think this would work out because if my other supplies are out of town... It's always good. I like I, my, my favorite saying that I always say is I love having the barn full. <laughs> I do. I love having the barn full. Yes, as much as disgusting and twisted as that sounds. I love having the barn full, meaning I love having the barn full of all these what gorgeous horses and different rich horses and different young horses and different all, all different kinds and then I take one horse out and run it to death and then I put it back in the stall it's a metaphor but actually this is how I how I look at everyone and then I take another horse out 
run it to death and put it back in the stall. And then I just continue to cycle them out pretty much until either one of the horses give up and die or they break free from the, uh, the stalls. But I've had a couple break free from the stalls through the years. So I am needing um, to replace a few. So if you would love, I mean, I, I would feel that you would be honored to join uh, join my team here. And I am looking so forward to meeting you later um, for for dinner. And uh, I think I think this is going to work out. This is going to be great. And then I can just show you my true colors. Uh, you know, give a take. I, I usually do it after a couple years. I start giving red flags though after a few months, but um, but then I cover it up with gifts. So you, you know, and I I tell you how sorry. Sometimes I don't apologize though. It's always fake fake apologies. I'll just give you some gifts. So what I'll do is I'll try to keep my mask on as much as I can for several years. And then just full blown out like, you know, you might get your hair ripped out or your lip busted or, you know, your phones are going to probably be broken. So I would probably hide a phone. Um, I don't know. It just depends. I know a lot of uh, a lot of times I know if if you know, we're going to have children, you'll want to take lots of pictures of them. So I am known to delete like thousands of people's photos of their children and different family on the phone. So, you know, I kind of like, I, I enjoy making people suffer that way. So um, if you would want to meet later, I feel that I have a, an open stall for you. And I think it's going to work out. So what do you say? No? Huh. All right. Shove my marguerite up what? Huh. All right. Well, you have a good one then. I guess it's, I guess it's a no.